everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Hercules Hercules is by far the most immortal hero of any mythology. He was known as Heracles to the ancient Greeks at least 2,500 years ago, and then later called Hercules by the Romans. Although his story has changed slightly throughout the centuries, it has remained relatively true to its Greek form. But according to some experts, the story of Hercules may have its roots much deeper, all the way back to the Stone Age and to a real human being. In Greek mythology, Hercules is the son of Zeus and a mortal woman. He is gifted with incredible strength, but Hera, Zeus's wife, is jealous of Hercules. To punish the demigod, she tricks him into falling into a blind rage and killing his family. To atone for his sins, Hercules must complete his twelve labors, ranging from cleaning stables to fighting the legendary Hydra. Only after Hercules completes his labors may he find some peace and be accepted by the gods of Olympus. His story has been told more times than can be counted, but it likely started as a much simpler tale prior to Greek civilization. Like many ancient stories that have survived today, Hercules was likely a real man whose deeds transformed him into a legend. It's possible he lived in the Stone Age, did something his peers found remarkable, and stories about him were told continuously for thousands of years to come. Unfortunately, there is no physical evidence of a Hercules. All we have is circumstantial evidence and logic. For example, the beasts he battled in his legendary Twelve Labors were also likely inspired by common animals. The Nemean lion was an exaggerated lion, the Hydra was an extreme representation of a venomous snake, and the Stymphalian birds were frighteningly dangerous birds. The real Hercules may have been a great warrior who slayed many beasts during his life, perhaps some Stone Age man who strangled a lion with his bare hands. Number 9. Meropis Even the ancient Greeks thought Plato's vision of Atlantis was absurd. The Greek writer Theopompus, who lived between 380 and 315 BC, disliked Atlantis so much that he wrote his own work a satire against it. His story, Philippica, was a direct challenge to Plato's tale of Atlantis. In Theopompus's story, he describes a city called Meropis. This city is revealed to King Midas of the Minoans by a centaur. The city of Meropis, just like Atlantis, was huge and highly advanced, boasting technological marvels and an army bigger than any the world had ever seen. They sent an army of 10 million soldiers to attack and conquer Hyperborea, a mythical region in the northern part of the world. The Greeks believed the Hyperboreans lived in a beyond realm a frigid land of ice and snow at the top of the world. Most historians say they were likely talking about Scandinavia, but the idea was so absurd that they thought it was a myth. At the end of the story, the Meropes, citizens of Meropis, changed their minds about looting the Hyperboreans, and everyone lived happily ever after. And while many historians believe Meropis was just a joke city told in mockery of Atlantis, others believe it was real. Emil Forer, Swiss expert on ancient cultures, said the Greek island of Kos was Meropis. The city's army traveled to the northern lands of Hyperborea, but found nothing but a wasteland of snow. Number 8. European Dragons Dragons may really have existed in ancient Europe. The Roman poet Virgil was one of the first to describe a dragon around the end of the 2nd century AD. He described a fight between a shepherd and a constricting snake that he called Draco. Later on in the Middle Ages, dragons began to be depicted as fire-breathing lizard monsters that had leathery bat wings, muscular tails, and pointy spikes along their spine. Dragon's blood supposedly boasted unique powers and was especially useful in longevity potions. In Christian culture, dragons often represented the devil himself or some other agent of great evil. Dragons in European stories had a knack for hiding in abandoned castles filled with gold and treasure, living underground, and occasionally giving sage advice. What's really interesting about European dragons is that they change from region to region. Italian dragons were almost always evil and connected to religion. Iberian dragons in Spain were seen as flying serpents like giant locusts. Polish dragons were more similar to basilisks, huge bloated serpents living in the cellars of Warsaw or hiding in the sewers. The great red Welsh dragon came from an Arthurian legend and was such a magnificent beast it became the symbol for Welsh leaders. 
The red dragon is still on the Welsh flag today, and in Nordic countries dragons were typically sea serpents instead of flying lizards who breathe fire. But which one was real? Historians believe dragons were created when early humans came across fossils of dinosaurs. They didn't know what to make of them, but could tell they were the bones of long dead beasts. Seeing these fossils spawned tales of great and terrifying creatures, which evolved into stories of dragons. And now for number 7. But first, it's shoutout time! Big thank you to Waffles and Green Screen Guru for supporting this channel! Are you a part of the Origins Explained family? Subscribe to see more amazing videos like these! Number 7. Asgard Asgard is the realm of the Old Norse gods in Norse mythology. It's where the Aesir live, gods like Odin, Thor, Loki, Freya… you get it. Most modern depictions of Asgard show it as a shining celestial city located in its own private piece of heaven. In the myths, the only way to reach Asgard is to travel across the magical Bifrost, a rainbow bridge that connects the different realms. However, there are some who believe Asgard was based on a real place right here on Earth. Snorri Sturluson wrote the Gilfaganing at the beginning of the 13th century. This mythical text deals with the creation and destruction of the world, the birth of the Aesir gods, and the truth about the mysterious city of Asgard. According to Snorri's 700-year-old text, Asgard was a real city, located in modern-day Turkey, called Troy. If Snorri is to be believed, the mythical Norse gods were nothing but a royal family from Turkey. He claimed that at the center of the world was a grand city filled with palaces and halls, more grand than any other city. The king of the city had a daughter named Priam, and she gave birth to a son named Tror, who later became Thor. After several generations, they had a son who would be called Odin, and his wife was Frigidia, or Frigg. Odin would eventually depart the city of Troy and make his home in Sweden, where his legend would live on in the Number 6. Guinevere Guinevere is the wife of King Arthur in the old Arthurian legends. She is one of the most famous mythical characters in Britain and the mightiest queen of England. She was often written as the loving wife of King Arthur, and at other times her character was made to be treacherous and conniving. Guinevere always changed depending on who the author of the story was but she always remained the wife of King Arthur. Now, some historians are claiming Guinevere may have been a real queen in the Middle Ages, even if King Arthur was only a myth. Guinevere first appears in the history of the kings of Britain. What is supposed to be a historically accurate chronicle of the rulers of Britain, written by Geoffrey of Monmouth in the 10th century. She had a Roman background, was a great beauty, and may have been based on a Welsh goddess. American scholar Roger Sherman Loomis has suggested Guinevere was based on the Celtic version of the Greek fertility goddess Persephone. However, scholar Caitlin Matthews believes Guinevere was the British version of the Irish goddess Eru. Even more speculation is that Arthur's wife was inspired by Eleanor of Aquitaine, or her daughter Marie de Champagne. Nobody can say for certain who Queen Guinevere was based on. The truth is, she might not have been based on anyone, but may have been a real queen that ruled alongside King Arthur over 1,000 years ago. Number 5. Camelot If King Arthur and Queen Guinevere were real people, that means they ruled from the legendary Camelot Castle. According to legends, King Arthur held his court at a great round table in the keep of Camelot accompanied by his most loyal knights and his magician Merlin. On the surface, it doesn't sound that fanciful. Many kings had castles. Why should Arthur's castle be the only one that's mythical? Historians believe Camelot may have been a real place in South Wales. One of the likeliest locations is Tintagel Castle. This was once a powerful and majestic castle that would have been perfectly suited to one of Britain's greatest rulers. In the 1980s, real physical evidence was found linking the castle to King Arthur. Experts discovered a Latin inscription with the name King Cole. This is shocking because according to the ancient historian Geoffrey of Monmouth, King Cole was one of King Arthur's ancestors. If King Cole was real, as the inscription suggests, that means that King Arthur could have been real too. More recent excavations revealed scraps of pottery and other artifacts from the 5th century AD, showing that Tintagel Castle was inhabited during the Roman period of Britain. It's highly likely that Arthur's lineage, the kings who ruled before him, moved into the castle after the Romans left and transformed it into Camelot. Number 4. Beowulf 
Beowulf is almost as famous as King Arthur, and likely was just as real. Beowulf first appeared in a poem about an Anglo-Saxon king, written in Old English sometime around the 8th century. The only surviving original manuscript was written by an anonymous author and discovered in the 15th century. The author is usually referred to as the Beowulf poet. Beowulf is a warrior king in Scandinavia who fights a monster named Grendel, the monster's mother, and later a dragon. The reason so many people believe Beowulf was a real historical figure is that the story is filled with other real historical figures. The epic poem takes place in 6th century Scandinavia and mentions real people like King Hygelac, Eidgils, and Hrolf Kraki. We know these people were real because there are examples of them in other historic documents from Scandinavia. The poem also mentions real events, like the Battle of Finsburg and the raid on Frisia. The general consensus is that Beowulf was a real person who had some influence on all of these events. Number 3. Jotunheim In Norse mythology, Jotunheim is one of the Nine Realms. We already talked about Asgard, the realm of the Aesir gods like Thor and Odin, but that was only one of the realms in Norse mythology. There was also Midgard, where the humans lived, there was Alfheim, where the elves dwelled, Helheim was the realm of the dead, and Jotunheim was the world of the giants. If Asgard was a real city of shining gold and splendid palaces, it stands to argue the rest of the realms were based on real places as well. And as a matter of fact, there really is a place in Norway called Jotunheimen, the land of the giants. In the myths, Jotunheim was a mountainous region of deep valleys, shimmering blue lakes and endless miles of nothingness. It was a land where winter never ceased, perpetually blanketed in snow. This describes eastern Norway perfectly, a land of valleys, glaciers, frozen waterfalls, and almost nobody to be seen. Thousands of square miles of absolutely nothing, with the landscape so dramatic, the Old Norse truly believed that giants had once lived there. Number 2. Procrustes Procrustes is not exactly a mythical hero, but more of a legendary villain. In Greek legend, Procrustes is a serial killer known as the Stretcher. He has a house on the side of a busy thoroughfare, and he offers his hospitality to any passing stranger. He puts these travelers up for the night, gives them a warm meal, and then murders them. The myth says that Procrustes had a weirdly sized iron bed that he would force his travelers into. If they were too short, he would stretch their legs by breaking their bones. If they were too tall, he would chop the bottom half of their legs off so that they would fit. Either way, the victim would die in the end. The legend comes to a close when the Greek hero Theseus, the same hero who murders the Minotaur of Crete, kills Procrustes in his own bed. Theseus cleaves the serial killer's legs off, and while this is indeed just a tale, many think Procrustes may have been the first official serial killer in history. As with most stories of heroes and villains, this one may have originated with a real roadside killer. Number 1. Troy if you were to ask a stranger what they knew about the city of Troy and the Trojan War, you would get mixed answers. Many people believe the city was a real historical place. Others think it was nothing but a made-up location created by the Greek poet Homer. But here's the truth about the city of Troy. It was 3,000 years ago that Homer told the story of Troy and the Trojan War. The story played out in his epic poem The Iliad. It's a story not only about war, but about love, betrayal, and humanity. If Homer is to be believed, Troy was one of the most important cities in the world at the time he wrote the poem thousands of years ago. Researchers are fairly certain that Troy was situated in the northwest corner of Turkey, a place that was the center of the ancient world. This was on the border of the Mediterranean, the Balkans, and Asia and Arabia. All roads may have led to Rome, but first, they all met in Turkey. Archaeologists have discovered evidence of an extremely ancient city in the northwest corner of Turkey. This city was initially settled around 3000 BC in the Early Bronze Age. It began as a small settlement, flourished, and grew. By around 2300 BC, it was a powerful city with tall walls encircling a mighty citadel. It continued to grow and prosper for another 1,000 years. The original walled city was surrounded by a massive, sprawling urban settlement. The wealth just continued to grow and grow until something happened in 1180 BC. Suddenly, there was destruction. With the end of the Bronze Age, about 400 years before Homer wrote his poem, Troy, the nameless city in northwestern Turkey, was destroyed. And this was likely the result of the real-life Trojan War. 
Thanks for watching. What's your favorite myth? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Come back soon. Bye.